The first episode of the Sticks and Picks Lacrosse podcast is about getting to know your hosts Will Pechnik and Jake Fox, some of their athletic backgrounds and why they've started the podcast. This episode is brought to you by the Ottawa Capitals Lacrosse Club, who help their players reach the next level in academics and athletics. Welcome to the Sticks and Picks Lacrosse Podcast. I'm your host, Will Pechnik. First, I'd like to start off by introducing my co-host. He's a 2018 NCAA Big Champion, uh, Big Ten Champion, sorry, with Johns Hopkins Lacrosse. He's a 2018 Man Cup Champion with the Century 21 Peterborough Lakers, a 2018 World Field Lacrosse Bronze Medalist with the Iroquois National Team. He's a current National Lacrosse League player with the New York Riptide and current Major Series Lacrosse player with the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club, Jake Fox. Hey, well, yeah, no, I'm excited to do this. Uh, as you can see, I had a hell of a 2018 there. Um, uh, I'm really excited to do this podcast. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, I think we're going to have a lot of great guests here and we have a bunch lined up and uh, I'm excited to get this going with you. Yeah, I'm all, it's uh, it's great to have you with me. I'm really excited for it. And yeah, you speaking about that 2018 season, that was pretty cool for you. So basically, uh, for our podcast, our goal for the Sticks and Picks Lacrosse podcast is to create content and give lacrosse fans an inside look to the creator's game of lacrosse. We'll be talking to players, coaches, officials, uh, media personnel, and lacrosse executives to learn more about the game, the people involved within the sport, and to share some stories for lacrosse fans. Yeah, so. I mean, I, we'll, we'll have some pretty cool people on. Um, we, we're working on talking to a bunch of people. I think as of right now, we've talked to probably, God, between the two of us, we've probably emailed, Twitter, DM'd anybody, about, about 100 people. And we've got a lot of responses and a lot of people who are excited for this. So I think uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I think especially during this time, there's not too much uh, going on in the world. And I think being able to bring some lacrosse content to everybody will uh, be good for the game and uh, share some stories with the fans. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not, I don't think it's going to be like your typical question and answer kind of thing. It's just kind of, you know, a, a locker room talk kind of podcast. We want guys to feel able to kind of express themselves and uh, be who they are and kind of show more who they are and uh, learn more about the personalities we have in our game because there's some really uh, interesting stories and interesting guys in the, in the game of lacrosse that some people might not know. Some people know a lot, but might not know some uh, small stuff. So I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, let's kind of introduce ourselves to our, uh, the fans here. How did you start and become involved in the game of lacrosse? Uh, I started playing lacrosse because my brother was three or four years old and he was too young to play any other sport. Um, so my parents signed us up for lacrosse. Um, I started playing with uh, Gloucester Lacrosse Association in uh, Ottawa in the East End uh, when I was about seven years old and uh, haven't looked back since. That's awesome. So I, I grew up playing just on the West End of Ottawa for the Nepia Knights Minor Lacrosse Association. Um, we're Gloucester and Nepean were big, big rivals and they still are to this day. Um, I learned a lot. I didn't know much or anything at all about the game until I started in Tyke when I was about six years old. And, uh, lacrosse has been one of my biggest passions to this day. Yeah. I mean, I think we can both say that lacrosse has done a lot for both of us in our lives and what we're doing. And now it's led to this, which is cool. I mean, we, uh, grew up playing against each other almost every, basically every other year. Uh, and we would play against each other about 10 times a year those years just because of the Gloucester and the Pian connection. We were so far from everyone else that Gloucester and the Pian decided to play each other and they went to all the same tournaments and they would always play against us. We would drive five hours to Toronto and we'd end up playing the Pian in the tournament. So, Yeah, I always remember those days driving to Peter Rowe, playing against you guys in the semifinals at the Lakers Classic or going all the way to Owen Sound and facing Ryan Fournay and his older Griffins team in Owen Sound nine hours away from Ottawa. Like it was just crazy you play the team so many times and you just develop such a rivalry and I guess hatred you could say for the team across the other side of the city yeah I mean it, it was you and Fournier and at that age group and then it was me and Aaron Forrester at the other age group and uh it, it's funny how hatred comes to friendship and that's kind of what we got here yeah yeah exactly so basically you've kind of taken well we both have taken different routes uh in the game you've gone on to the 
uh, NCAA route and playing professionally. And I kind of uh, slowed down my lacrosse career and just kind of take over coaching in the summertime. So speak about a little bit of your NCAA career and your current pro career right now. Yeah, so I was a uh, early recruit to Johns Hopkins University back when that was allowed. Uh, I was the first commit in my class. Uh, I was a freshman slash uh, going into my sophomore year of high school and uh, committed to go to Johns Hopkins University, which, uh, at, you know, it's a top 10 academic school in the U.S. and world renowned for its academics. And then probably, well, in my opinion, and most opinion, I believe, um, is the most historic lacrosse program there is. I uh, was fortunate enough to win a Big Ten championship there my junior year. And... Um, from there, I uh, was lucky enough to, you know, in the summertime, play for Peterborough, play Peterborough Junior A, where I was drafted. Um, was captain there my last year. And then um, moved up to Senior A, where I uh, won a Man Cup with Peterborough. And then um, this last year, was uh, drafted in the uh, top of the second round to uh, the new New York Riptide. Uh, so it's been pretty cool. Uh, I got to live in Long Island this year. Um, now in Pennsylvania uh, after this whole pandemic so it's been uh, it's been a hell, hell of a ride uh it was a lot of fun uh great group of guys the riptide um so now it's just uh trying to figure out something to do and I reached out to you and I saw you starting this podcast and said let's try to do it together let's see what we can do so I mean obviously uh I took the lacrosse route you kind of went hockey and then made your way back yeah, so I mean, I, it's pretty incredible. A lot of people I don't think would understand the kind of route that you would have taken, especially being from Ottawa. Uh, back when we were younger kids, lacrosse wasn't uh, the biggest game in the area. And I mean, I know you would have had to travel a lot to go to practices and stuff like that. But just you're kind of like a pioneer, like sorts of say, in, like, in, in Ottawa for the game of lacrosse and one of the first uh, field guys to go on to a pretty big school in the U.S. and um, I think that's what a lot of people need to realize is how much the game's developed in the, the Ottawa area now and uh, how much the game has grown. And it's pretty cool to see. It's You were like one of the uh, biggest names to come out of the Gloucester Association in recent history. And now both Nepean and Gloucester are both flourishing. So it's it's awesome to see stuff like that. Yeah, man, I, I remember uh, literally it was only Callum Crawford. He was the only really – guy in the nll for a while um his brother ian uh was in there here and there um and zwicky was there for a bit too and you know after that he kind of dropped off and i remember uh playing the game against philly uh, my first game and i think there was um between the two teams the uh, three or four ottawa guys on the floor uh which was pretty cool uh now obviously you have myself uh aaron forrester of the rock um, Nick Finley, um, Carter Bedour just got signed, um, and obviously a bunch of guys like Jordan Sturros and some others, uh, and guys like Cam Bedour who ripped it up at Duke, and a uh, bunch of guys working their way through junior, and guys who are winning Mintos from Ottawa and everything now. So uh, it's incredible to think how back in the day, you and me and Aaron making Team Ontario was, you know, basically thought of the highest you can go for Ottawa lacrosse. Um, and now we're slowly turning into a hotbed where, you know, we're becoming dominant centers and it's great to see. And I think it's only going to grow from there. Yeah, for sure. And it was like for me and in, in the P and growing up, it was really, uh, look for me looking up to Kyle Buchanan, Jeff Zawicki had already been in the national lacrosse league, but, uh, Kyle Buchanan going through the Nepean minor association, then on to the Ottawa Titans junior A. And then I believe you went to Robert Morris, uh, on a scholarship and then obviously he's had such a great career so far and he's definitely one yeah. of my idols as a player um I definitely looked up to him a lot uh JP Keeley's another one from the Nepean organization yeah, forgot about JP. that's d done a great job and um you know he he's worked for everything he's got so he should be proud of where he's gotten so far in his career and he's got a lot left to give so it's it's cool Dude, to see all the Ottawa played guys out on blow knees yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But it's it's definitely cool to see the Ottawa guys doing so well now. It is. Um, you represented uh team your uh your quad national team in the twenty eighteen World Field Across Championships. What was that like? Uh that was incredible. Um uh so 
I am a Métis uh, descent, so I was fortunate enough that I got to try out. And uh, Scotty Marr was one of the coaches there, um, who was my roommate in college's uh, father, who's the head coach at Albany also, and a Hopkins alum. And I actually, as an attackman, I played close defense for them. So I put a long pole in my hands. The first time, first game I ever played a long pole was playing against Team USA. Um, wow against one of my former college teammates. I, I ran out there and I went right for Ryan Brown, who I played with in college. And I said, I'm covering him. He's the only guy I really know. And he's a shooter. So I don't really have to cover him. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, I got to know, see firsthand how uh, the Iroquois team was treated. Uh, and it comes from different standards. Uh, the Israeli government almost didn't let us in and didn't let us go play in the game because uh, they didn't recognize our passports. Um, the Canadian and American government had to step in to help us out with that. And then we get there and, you know, we're treated like rock stars. We, we had basically every team other than Canadian and USA representatives cheering us on. Um, I would say that we probably by far are the uh, most uh, fan favorite team there. So it's pretty cool. And obviously there's a lot of uh, unbelievable talent on that team. Getting to play with the Thompson brothers, um, the Stats brothers. Um, Frankie Brown, who's becoming a really good player. Um, we obviously had like Warren Hill in that, who turned into one of the best goalies in the NLL this year. Um, so it's been, it was a really incredible experience. And uh, I hope to do it again. Um, I come the next games. And uh, I know my brother's gone to play for Iroquois teams a few times. And uh, I hope one day that we'll get to play on that team together. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely a pretty cool. Uh thing to represent your your nationalities like uh countries sort of say so it's it's definitely an honor and I mean I never ever got the chance to do that in lacrosse but I was fortunate enough to in hockey at the 2017 Spengler Cup that's where my route is a little bit different than yours with the hockey situation um it was it was a cool experience representing your country and I mean, I'm sure anytime you go to a world championship like that, it's it's something special. So uh, that's that's pretty cool. And yeah. you you also won uh, 2018 Man Cup with the Peterborough Lakers. How was that? Yeah, no, that was a that was a fun experience. Um, it was my first true year of senior, uh, so I was in and out of the lineup quite a bit, and I had to go back to school um, right during the Man Cup. And I get a call from Paul Day saying, hey, you know, we got game um, three, four, and five coming up. Uh, there's a good chance we can use you in one if the series goes on. So I got there about two hours before um, the face-off for game four. And we ended up winning and sweeping that day. So uh, I got to uh, party with the boys, go out, have a good night in the borough. And uh, yeah, it was uh, winning the championship in the borough, something uh, quite interesting. I'm sure hope that, you know, we can get a couple guys on. I'm sure they could tell a couple fun stories of winning uh, a manor in the borough. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lacrosse town. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, I think that you can say that. That's for sure. I mean, playing, I played hockey for the Austro Generals and we'd always go in and beat on the, uh, the Peter Rowe Pete peats especially in recent history but um the lacrosse is a little bit different story i think the the lakers have been uh, a little bit stronger in these past couple of years than the brooklyn lacrosse club so uh it's, it's definitely a, a huge lacrosse town and peterborough is definitely another hotbed for lacrosse yeah absolutely so uh yeah i think uh looking at this podcast now i think uh I think we're going to have a pretty interesting uh, time with this. I think we're going to be able to bring in some uh, big names. Uh, we've, we've talked to a couple of guys who are pretty big names in the game uh, who have expressed interest. And uh, I think it's going to be something different that we do on this podcast. Yeah, for sure. Uh, getting, getting fans some inside looks to the game of lacrosse and how special it truly is. Uh, hearing some stories of, of players, uh, coaches, referees, uh, l lacrosse executives, and even media personnel in the game. It's, it's just so interesting to hear their take and their different stories on how they got to where they are today. So it's going to be a lot of fun doing this together. And I think lacrosse fans can get excited about something um, just because of uh, the time right now, there's, it, it's a tough time for everyone and uh, having a little bit of lacrosse stories and, 
and some cool uh, content to give to them, I think it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. And like, obviously we both have our connections. So we're going to be talking to, you know, some pro hockey guys who grew up playing lacrosse and how that helped them. We're going to be talking to, like I said, some legends of the game who have been, you know, have won basically everything. We're going to be talking to young up and coming guys who, uh, you know, talk to them about their experience, where they come from, talking to guys who, you know, have all different uh, upbringing, all different uh, nationalities. Uh, we got Iroquois, Canadians, Americans, um, all who have played both indoor, outdoor, have taken different routes. We got guys who went straight to the pros, guys who went to university. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see guys get a, a more in-depth kind of locker room conversation uh, with players where, uh, it's it's the same thing as you'd see guys, you know, like crack open a beer at the bar and just having a talk. I think that's kind of the feel we're going for here. Uh, just kind of a, a, an organized shit show, you may say. Yeah, exactly. A, a good uh, behind the scenes look into a, an everyday lacrosse player's life or, or a media personnel or a lacrosse executive of what all their work, hard work goes into behind the scenes that a lot of people don't see. So it'll definitely be interesting and we're excited to hear everyone's stories. Um, just a couple more questions for you here. Who is your favorite coach and why? And who is your favorite teammate and why? Uh, favorite coach, uh, probably Dave Petromal, uh, Coach Petro at Hop. Um, obviously, recently being uh, parting ways with the university. Um, he he's a guy who like he can honestly say he gave a shit about every single one of his players. Um, he's the kind of guy that, you know, he works harder than anyone else. He's up till about 4 a.m. every day watching film. Uh, he's the kind of coach where if you get any kind of trouble or you need help or you need someone to talk to, he'll pick up his phone or be there, you know, anytime, day or night. Um, and, you know, he is the embodiment of John Hopkins lacrosse. And it's going to be weird seeing him not behind the bench next year. And, uh, you know, everyone who's – basically everyone who's ever had him as a coach will say that, you know, they love him. and how great of a guy he is. Um, I've never met someone who cares more about Hopkins lacrosse or is so dedicated to his profession as a coach. Uh, so I think Petro is someone, especially me uh, coaching now, uh, I was coaching high school this year before everything. Um, you know, I realized there's a lot of Petro in me when I coach. Uh, some of it good, some of it bad, but, you know, overall it's hard to, you know, go against the um, arguably one of the best coaches and best players of all time. Um, in terms of favorite teammate, there's been a lot. Uh, probably one of the most fun to play with was John Garner Jr. Um, that was a hell of an experience because I grew up idolizing that guy. Um, but uh, I think Andrew Suter and Mark Steinhaus were two guys that really, um, you know, early on in my uh, career when I was getting called out to play senior, uh, I sat beside Mark a lot, uh, Steinhaus, and uh, he, uh, he's very fun, very outgoing. Uh, he's a guy that will, you know, celebrate your goal as much as anyone else is and be the first to, you know, come pat you on the back when you did a good thing and put a foot up your ass when you did the wrong thing. Um, and Seuss is the same way. Um, so I think those two guys are kind of two guys that popped off for me. Like when you asked that question, we're kind of two guys that popped in my head right away. Um, I know you've probably had a lot between hockey and lacrosse uh, players and coaches that kind of stand out for you. So let's go to you. See uh, who who are your favorite coach and uh, who was your uh, favorite teammate? Uh, well, I've been fortunate to play for the Green Gales before. All the coaching s staff that I've ever had with the Green Gales have been uh, first class. But I have to go with uh, my minor lacrosse coach. I had him every single year, Tyke, all the way up through midget. I knew nothing about the game of lacrosse when I first started and he coached me every single year it's Jamie Forrester he taught me basically everything I know about the game and I was lucky enough to be in between both the sons Aaron Forrester who's currently a member of the Toronto Rock and his older son Seth Forrester so I got the best of both worlds I got to play for Jamie uh every year and uh, it was just it was something I'm forever grateful for and he taught me everything I know basically about the game of lacrosse so it's it's definitely Jamie um and then favorite teammate I've I've had a lot of great teammates over the years again with my Green Gills team I've I love them all like brothers I grew up in Nepean and Aaron Forrester was definitely in my major years when he was a minor uh we definitely clicked well together and put a couple yeah, of you guys kind of beat you guys kind of beat the shit out of us all the time 
Yeah, we put a couple beatings on the Griffins. We were usually stronger at an A team in those years from Pee Wee through to Midget, I believe. So yeah. we had a pretty, pretty good team. Um, but if I go into another sport, uh, one of the cooler teammates I've ever had is probably Nathan Gerby. Um, one of the, he is the smallest player in the National Hockey League. And just uh, his story is just so inspiring. He's, uh, He's so small, but he he plays like he's six foot four, and uh, just the way he carries himself, he's a true professional. He he really taught me a lot in my young professional career. So, I, I think a guy like that was uh, someone pretty cool to look up to. No, no, for sure, absolutely. He's a. Uh, I, I remember watching him play in the NHL for a while, and yeah, he uh, he he doesn't give a shit about his size. He kind of just throws his body around. And he just loves playing the game and he'll do anything for his teammates kind of guy it seems like yeah yeah exactly he's a great locker room guy as well he's he's a lot of fun and um the stories that guy used to tell are are just hilarious and i hope we can get some stories like that from a bunch of lacrosse guys on here and then uh, i think our podcast will be a, a lot of fun for lacrosse fans no i i, I think uh, i think we'll have some guys who will be uh more than willing to share stories to say the least yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, a big part of lacrosse that doesn't get enough praise uh, or attention is referees. Uh, we've both been minor uh, officials in the Ontario Lacrosse Association. Um, we'll have the sticks and picks play into the whistle segments. This will be all about talking to officials and getting to know why they decide to become a referee. And we'll ask them several different questions. Um and then uh, every guest that we have on the show, we're always going to ask them who their favorite referee is and why. So, Jake, who's your choice? Uh, there's a couple, I guess. Uh, I, oh, wow, this is hard. I mean, obviously there's refs that we've had basically all the way growing up. Like you and me basically had the same core group of refs every time. Um, I guess one that kind of pops off the page for me is uh, – Bill Fox, I had him a lot my first couple of years of junior. Uh, he was always up there, and uh, Ecclestone too. He's always there. He's a he's a he's a character, but he's a great guy, and uh, you know he cares about it. And then uh, Bill Fox is just you know it was funny. We were playing a game against the team in junior, and uh, I was getting pretty pissy, and I was yelling at Foxy, and and Foxy gets it back to me. He's like, "Listen up, son, you shut your mouth." And the guy. Uh, the kid in front of me thought that he was actually my dad. Uh, he whispered, "My, are your dad rapping?" I'm like, "No, we just have the same last name." Go on, grow up. Um, so yeah, I would say uh, Echo Stone and probably Foxy are two of my favorite refs. That's awesome. I I love referees that have a good sense of humor like that during the game. So um, mine's kind of the same way. Uh, we both had Ian Garrison. He's he's definitely one of my favorites. Uh, one story that I hope he can come on one day and explain is him refing in jeans last year. That was, that was definitely a sight to see. Uh, I had tears coming out of my eyes on the bench from laughing, trying to coach the the gales, but, uh, he's definitely up there. And then there's, there's so many good referees that don't get enough credit. Um, uh, and they're not all NL guys. These are guys who've been repping junior and uh, senior and, you know, minor forever. Like there's still guys that I recognize who ref provincials that were ref provincials when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah, like, exactly. Not all these guys are in the NLL. Like these guys, you know, they've made a commitment to this to do it every summer. And, you know, they do it, you know, obviously there's a little pay to it, but it's nothing like the, you know, roll over for. So these guys are really doing it for the love of the game. Yeah, and then especially like for me, I always like a good sense of humor. And then I think uh, Shane Withers is a really good example of that he he communicates well with the players and he brings some sarcastic uh, comments into the game, which makes the game a lot lighter and a lot more fun. And uh, I've always been a big fan of his. Wiz can come off like a dick sometimes if you're in the wrong mood, but he's he's great. He's awesome. Oh yeah, I'm sure I'll get him on here talking about a Santa Claus story. He'll he'll get a good uh, chuckle out of that one once he hears this. So basically, we got a lot of lot of high end players lined up to come onto our show. Uh, we're gonna have lots of uh, current and former executives in the NLL, um, both uh, field lacrosse and box lacrosse players. Yeah. So um, I mean. We kind of give a couple of hints here, I think, to a couple of players uh, to uh, who are going to be showing up on our podcast. Um, you know, we'll uh, 
for example, let's uh, let's drop a big one here, see if people can guess this one. Uh, let's just say five man cups and probably recognized as one of the greatest lacrosse players of all time. Uh, we got a brother duo uh, who, you know, have taken the NLL by storm, um, who, you know, grew up, uh, basically had a stick in their hand their whole life. And, you know, uh, both playing in, uh, have played at the highest level of lacrosse so far, both represent Iroquois and uh, obviously their professional teams. And, uh, you know, we got some some of the top personalities in the game um, and top, you know, and play at some of the top level. We got some two of probably the most vocal and um, I would say entertaining players in the PLL that will be jumping on here. Uh, NCAA champions, um, NLL, man, major series, uh, Minto Cup champions guys who have basically done it all. And we get to kind of hear the insight of those stories, uh, talk about those teams, kind of what made those championship teams different, uh, the different now between college and pro and a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, I think you guys are really going to enjoy what we have to say, uh, what we, who we're talking to, and uh, just all the different kind of personalities we have in this sport. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be so exciting. And then probably – one of my favorites uh, is going to be another duo brothers. One's a professional hockey player and the other one's a national lacrosse league player. So I'm definitely looking forward to all of our guests and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and hearing their stories. So thanks uh, for listening to the sticks and picks podcast. Enjoy your day, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you guys soon. Thanks for listening to the first episode of the sticks and picks lacrosse podcast. We have a special shout out to Colleen Grimes for creating our new logo. You can check out more of her work at www.collgrimes.com. Also be sure to like and follow our social media pages on Instagram and Twitter at Sticks Picks Lax and on Facebook at Sticks and Picks Lacrosse. Our Play Until the Whistle segments will be released on Saturdays and our podcasts will be released on Tuesdays. We hope you enjoyed. Stay safe and healthy during this difficult time.